These mountains once towered higher than the Himalayas, born from ancient continents colliding 480 million years ago. By all logic, they should have eroded flat, yet their ridges still shape half a continent. Scientists estimate that 25 kilometers of rock have vanished since their creation. So how can a range older than the Atlantic Ocean itself still rise from the Earth? The answer defies almost everything we know about time, destruction, and the planet's hidden forces. 480 million years ago, the world looked nothing like it does today. Vast oceans separated ancient continents, but slow, relentless movement deep within the Earth set the stage for something extraordinary. Two massive landmasses, ancestral North America and a chain of volcanic islands, drifted toward each other, closing the Iapetus Ocean between them. When they finally collided, the force was unimaginable. Seabeds crumpled and buckled, driving thick layers of rock upward into towering peaks. This was the Ordovician Orogeny, a mountain-building event that stitched together the crust and gave birth to the first Appalachians. The collision did not just pile up rock, it transformed the very structure of the land. Layers of ancient seabed were squeezed, folded, and thrust miles into the sky, forming a jagged spine that stretched for thousands of miles along what would become eastern North America. In places, the mountains soared higher than any peak in today's Rockies. The roots of these new mountains plunged deep into the earth, anchoring them with a foundation of hard, crystalline rock Gneiss, schist, and quartzite, formed under intense heat and pressure. These rocks, some more than a billion years old, became the backbone of the range. The creation of the Appalachians was not a single moment, but a process that played out over millions of years. Each tectonic collision added new layers, thickened the crust, and changed the land's shape. What began as a violent upheaval would become the stage for an even longer story, where time, weather, and gravity would test the endurance of these ancient mountains, and only the hardest, deepest bones would remain. Wind, rain, ice, and rivers have worked across the Appalachians for nearly half a billion years, stripping away layer after layer of rock. The scale of this loss is almost unimaginable. Geologists estimate that more than 25 kilometers, about 15 miles, of solid rock have been worn from the peaks since their birth. That is enough material to bury Manhattan under stone nearly five times taller than Mount Everest. Every drop of rain that fell on these slopes, every river that cut a valley, carried grains of ancient mountain out to sea. Glaciers, when they came, sheared off summits and gouged deep hollows, leaving behind scars and boulder fields. The sediment carved from these mountains did not vanish. It traveled east, settling into vast basins and eventually forming new rocks beneath the Atlantic. Scientific drilling off the coast has pulled up sand and clay that began as Appalachian bedrock, now lying hundreds of kilometers from their source. Yet, despite this relentless wear, the ridges and valleys still stand. The paradox grows sharper. If so much has been removed, why do any mountains remain at all? The answer lies not only in the power of erosion, but in the unseen forces that have helped the land resist complete flattening. This is the enduring geological puzzle that has driven geologists for generations. Quartzite ridges, 
slice through the Appalachian landscape like ancient scars, stubborn bones that refuse to wear away. These are not the original summits, but the deep roots, metamorphic rocks, forged under crushing pressure and searing heat, left behind as softer layers vanished. Quartzite, once ordinary sandstone, transformed into something nearly indestructible. Its tightly bonded crystals resist the attacks of rain, frost, and wind, even as neighboring shales and limestones crumble into valleys. Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina stands as a testament to this resilience. There, a geological window exposes the old heart of the range, billion-year-old gneiss and thick beds of quartzite, tilted skyward by forces long spent. Outcrops like these draw geologists from around the world, eager to touch the bones of a continent. Along the spine of the Appalachians, these hard layers form the ridges that stretch for miles, tracing the ghost of mountains that once towered higher than the Himalayas. Every ridge and cliff tells the same story, layers upon layers stripped to the hardest core. Without these stubborn bones, erosion would have flattened the land long ago. Instead, the range endures, its oldest rock still standing guard over the valleys below. The physical foundation of the Appalachians is not just what rises above the trees, but the deep, crystalline roots that hold the memory of ancient collisions. These roots provide the raw material for the mountains to be lifted and reshaped, setting the stage for the quiet forces still at work beneath our feet. Passive margin rejuvenation describes a process as subtle as it is powerful. After the Atlantic Ocean began to open, the eastern edge of North America became what geologists call a passive margin, a place where the crust is no longer being squeezed by colliding continents, but instead flexes gently as the ocean basin widens. This flexing means the land slowly rises, almost imperceptibly, over millions of years. The rate is measured in millimeters per year, about as fast as human fingernails grow. It is a pace that seems trivial in a human lifetime, but over geologic time, it is enough to counteract the steady loss from erosion. Uplift and erosion find a kind of balance, with the crust lifting just enough to keep the mountains from vanishing entirely. The term passive margin rejuvenation captures this quiet, ongoing renewal. It is not dramatic mountain building, but a slow, persistent flexing, an ancient landscape rising bit by bit as the Atlantic continues its silent expansion. This mechanism gives the Appalachians their staying power, explaining how their ridges still catch the light after nearly half a billion years. Networks of GPS stations anchored across the Appalachian region quietly record the land's every subtle movement. Each year, these instruments measure vertical shifts, sometimes no more than a fraction of a millimeter, confirming that the crust is still rising in places. Satellite radar known as INSAR adds another layer of precision. By comparing radar images taken months or years apart, scientists detect the slow breathing of the mountains, uplift so gentle it would take centuries to notice with the naked eye. These measurements are not just theoretical. Data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and UNAVCO, plotted as vectors on detailed maps, reveal a pattern of steady, widespread uplift, with rates often matching or exceeding the pace of erosion. 
Beneath the surface, seismic tomography and gravity surveys expose patches of warmer, less dense mantle supporting the crust from below. This dynamic support is not uniform. Thermal anomalies and mantle flow create pockets where the land rises just a bit faster. The combined evidence from satellites, ground stations, and deep earth imaging has transformed what was once speculation into a measured reality. The Appalachians are not merely surviving, they are still, in the smallest ways, being rebuilt from below. In the Miocene, 15 to 20 million years ago, something subtle but profound happened across the southern Appalachians. Research teams armed with high-resolution LIDAR and river profile data traced a series of abrupt steps known as nick points marching upstream through river valleys. These features are sharp breaks in an otherwise gentle landscape, and they signal a renewed phase of incision. Their timing is not random. Cosmogenic dating and thermochronology point to a wave of uplift beginning in the Miocene, long after the last major tectonic collision. Offshore, sediment cores pulled from the Atlantic margin and the Gulf of Mexico reveal a matching signal. Layers deposited during this period show a sudden jump in both the volume and the grain size of material flushed out to sea, evidence that rivers were carving deeper and carrying more debris than before. The correspondence between nick points on land and sediment pulses offshore ties the story together. Far from being a landscape in slow decay, the Appalachians experienced a pulse of rejuvenation in the geologically recent past, a reminder that even ancient mountains can be stirred to new life by forces deep within the Earth. Even now, Satellites measure the Appalachians subtly rising, proof that Earth's forces never truly rest. Their quiet persistence shapes our climate, our watersheds, and our lives. In a world obsessed with speed, these ancient ridges remind us resilience is built in deep time. Thanks for joining us among the enduring stones.